All right, everyone. Welcome to the update video for Pandora's Box Season 1. It's been so long, but we're so excited to be back. We've been working hard at developing, building, and testing these games, and we think you're going to love them. So let's get right into the changes. Firstly, for our general changes. For those who don't know, Pandora's Box will feature a game selection system instead of being entirely random. As a team, you will need to select a game together, and that means three of you agreeing on what you're going to pick. Then, the wheel is going to spin and randomly land in one of the team's slots, and that team will get their game played. And finally, there will be a multiplier. That's right, a multiplier. The first two games will be worth normal. In game three, it'll go up to 1.25, then 1.5, 1.75, 2, 2.25, and then finally, the last game will be worth 2.5 massive points on the table. So you're going to be wanting to pick the better games for your team last. And since there are nine games in total, that means only one of them will be getting skipped. So be careful. Make sure you get your best game last for the best chance of winning this event. Now, to accompany with our return, we have made a brand new lobby, which we made completely from scratch. There are small builds dedicated to each game, which you can find around everywhere. There's also a parkour course you can try out, which has some very difficult jumps, so give it a try if you're brave. And then, there's also a mini hyperdrive course you can do to get a little bit of a practice in for something we'll touch on later. Uh, we hope you enjoy our amazing new lobby. It's very cool, got lots of neat stuff, some Easter eggs too. So see what you can find, and have fun before the event starts, or between games. Our first game is Disco Fever, which is still the game you know and love, so no major changes here. Find the block, and jump to it fast before the rest disappears. But one small thing, we've added bonuses for the top 5 placing players instead of only a bonus for winning. That'll increase the value of placing like 2nd or 3rd. Of course, the objective is still the same, so be the last player or team standing to win it all. Three rounds of course, just like before. Our next game will be Survival Games, and we've got a brand new map for it. Stone Gate Survival Games. Now, it's still mostly the same game as before, but there have been a few adjustments to the loot pool to make it more balanced for everyone. One thing you'll notice is that there's no longer any enchantments of any kind. No weapons, no armor, no nothing. But more importantly, is a bigger change. If you die early on, you will now be given a second chance in the new Gulag system. You will fight someone in a very quick one-on-one. -on -one. Now if you win, you'll be returned high into the sky with an elytra to glide down, as well as some medium level gear to start you off with. Now be careful, because the gulag isn't going to be open forever. It'll only it'll close when either there are 16 players remaining, or it'll close automatically after a certain amount of time, whichever comes first. And also, you're only going to get survival points when someone's fully eliminated, not when they're killed and sent to gulag. So you only get to invent survival points only if someone is fully eliminated. And you also don't get any kill points from getting a Gulag kill. But of course, you will earn survival points off because you just eliminated them. And just like with Disco, the goal is simple. Be the last player or team standing. Our next game will be Speedrun. We've got a brand new original map. This one will have you high in the sky, running around in the clouds. It also has a very cool elytra section at the end, which you'll have to navigate through very carefully. Now, as for the effect pads, the speed and jump ones are the same as before, but for the brown slowness pads, we've drastically nerfed them. They'll feel like more like hitting a speed bump now, instead of feeling like you ran into mud. But they can make a difference, so do avoid them at all cost. Scoring is the same as before, so try and just be the first player to finish. Moving on to Capture Point, there are no gameplay changes at all, it's still the same game as before, except for a new map of course, this time we're heading to Nunala Camp, borrowed from our other game, Counter Push. Complete as many rotations as you can to take the win. Okay, and now let's move on to Gauntlet. Now for Gauntlet, some of the games have been made harder than they were before, 
so you'll need to get on it and play sharper to win. Now, there is one new game being added called King of the Hill. In this game, you'll be given a knockback stick and need to knock your opponents off the hill. You'll earn points by being on higher levels. And also, you will not be able to crouch in this game. If you crouch, you will not earn any points, so be careful about that. So select two games that you're the best at, or that your team forced you to select. And have fun, and try and win both of them if you can. Moving on to our absolute fan favorite, Tunnel Block. It's gotten a major change, two of them in fact. Now, some parts are the same, like the zoning being the same as it is, as well as the scoring. But, one thing you'll notice is that blocks are no longer unlimited, like cobblestone, so if you place one, you're not going to get it back immediately like you do in Sky High. But, instead, you can buy it at the new shop system. Here, you'll be able to buy cobblestone, cobble deep slate, obsidian, or even TNT. And on the other side of the spawn, you can buy team upgrades. You can upgrade your swords, you can upgrade pickaxe efficiency, armor protection, or even your concrete generator speed. Use these items and upgrades to gain the upper hand of the battle, because they're very useful, especially in the late game. Now, all items and upgrades are bought with concrete from your generator, so you're going to have to accept the risk of not having that concrete available to place down, which might cost you a game. So you'll need to be careful not to buy too much, but also to buy enough to gain the upper hand. And that'll be on you to figure out. So once again, place blocks in strategic areas, earn the highest score possible, and use the items to your advantage without buying too many. Good luck! On to one of our real fan favorites, Sky High. We've built a brand new map for this game, and we think you're going to love it. It's mostly the same game as before, but there are some nice changes. Firstly, we finally made four distinct chest tiers. Each tier has better items than the ones below it. Firstly, there are common chests marked with green dust. Then there are rare chests marked in blue dust. Then there's epics, which are marked in purple dust. And then finally, there are legendaries, which are marked with gold dust. Now there's only four legendaries, but you're gonna wanna get to them quick if you'd like the items inside. Or maybe you'd rather play slower and go for more epics, or rares. So it's your choice on how you want to play. And then, the border has also been changed. No longer is the vanilla border there. In its place is a new perfectly spherical border marked with red particles. It's going to come in a little slower than the previous border did, so you'll have a little bit more time to play at your own pace. But it'll still be coming in fast. So watch its place at all times. You don't want to be caught in it. So once again, Eliminate the opposition, so you can be the last player or team standing. Three rounds, of course, just like before. And now, let's move on to Haunted Havoc. Now, the first massive change is that I will no longer be alone. There will be three people joining me for a total of four hunters to start with. You're going to have to watch out for multiple people. But, to keep it fair to you guys, we're going to be a little weaker overall. First, all Hunters, including the four initial, as well as any players joining as Hunters later, will now all have the exact same statistics, Speed 1 and an Iron Sword. This will keep it a little more fair across everyone, instead of it being me super dominant, it will now be everyone, but a little more fair. But there will also be some additional tools you can use to keep yourself alive. Firstly, every so often you're going to hear a thunder sound effect. When this happens, all hunters will glow for a short amount of time, revealing their location. So when you hear the thunder, watch out. The hunter locations will be revealed, so pay attention to the thunder sounds. They'll be very useful. And in addition to that, you will now have a new weapon, a flashlight. And this flashlight can stun a hunter for two seconds. Now, it does, this does not guarantee a free escape, because it's only a slowness, and it also does not affect their damage output, so be very careful about it. You'll have two uses of the stun, and it will be on a 60 second cooldown between them. And as for the rest of Haunted Havoc's gameplay, it remains relatively unchanged from what you know before. Once again, complete the challenges, collect and deliver gems, and escape the mansion as fast as possible. And since the game has been made harder, the amount of points has gone up. 
but be careful because it's going to be a lot easier to die, making the game a much more risk reward than it was before. So watch your surroundings at all times, be careful, stay safe. Good luck! So those are the eight games you've seen before, but of course, we do have one new game we've revealed at IdiotCon. Hyperdrive. You will be equipped with an elytra, and you must use it to clear a very challenging course by gliding, as well as using fireworks. Now be careful, because if you die, you're going to be sent back to the previous checkpoint, wasting precious time. Touching the ground will also make you take damage, so you won't be able to walk to the finish line, you're going to have to actually fly. The fireworks will work on a charged cooldown system, meaning that you will earn one every five seconds, but only can store a maximum of three. Those who played Blink and Counterpush will understand the system. There will be three courses, which will give points for completion based on placement. It'll be the same system as Speedrun, but only 40% of the points that Speedrun gives to account for the three maps. So do the best to finish as fast as you can. And finally, there is the Colosseum. After eight games have been played, the final two will go fight in a final battle to determine that season's winner. And the game is the same one as you know from before, but with a brand new map. This one has a lot more cover available, but also some more open areas, as well as a reworked mid. This will give more options to play around and will constantly keep you on your toes. You always gotta watch out for those enemies that you might not see coming. Once again, the first team to win two sets will win Pandora's Box. And those are all the updates we have for you today. We are so excited and we can't wait to play Pandora's Box Season 1 this Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2.30 p.m. Eastern, or 7.30 p.m. GMT. Thank you all for watching, and we hope to see you all there.